Okay, this will be part three of unit L, respiration, and this is probably the most challenging part, so this is the part I would expect would take you the most amount of time in your studying, so let's go. Uh, the first thing uh, to understand and the thing that I find students are most confused about is when we talk about the reactions, and we're talking about chemical reactions, unfortunately, so that means we're going back to, for people that are not good at chemistry, having to compensate for that fact, we are going to be in the blood. We're talking about chemical reactions that are actually occurring in your bloodstream. So uh, if you can imagine, right, in your mind, it, your blood is like a soup, right, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in there. We're going to be talking about it uh, these reactions in two locations. We're going to be talking about the chemical reactions that occur at your pulmonary capillaries, so the reactions that describe external res respiration, and then we're going to be talking about the chemical reactions that occur inside your body uh, at your body capillaries, your systemic com capillaries, and we call these chemical reactions internal respiration. So we're in the blood, we're talking about chemical reactions happening in two different spots. So uh, we also need to make sure that we remind ourselves or we remind, uh, we remember hemoglobin is a huge large protein, so large in fact that the red blood cells cannot carry a nucleus, so they've thrown the nucleus away in place of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin occupies almost the entire cell. Uh, hemoglobin is an example of a protein with quaternary structure. It's two polypeptide chains held together. They have uh, four uh, bonding spots, binding sites, uh, so they can carry eight oxygen atoms or four O2, oops, it oozles, four, uh, four O2 molecules. I got too close there. I won't try to write it, but 4O2 molecules. Um, so let's look at the reactions. Remember external respiration, reactions are occurring in the blood that's traveling by the alveoli. Uh, there are two conditions that are going to define or allow for or promote the reactions for occurring. I remember them by saying uh, cool and basic. So cool 37 because when we go inside the body the, the temperature will rise to 38. Basic 7.4. When we go inside the body the pH is going to drop slightly become 7.38. We call that acidic. The reactions are, and I'd ask you to pause it here uh, and copy these down if you didn't get them in class, we can either know the words or we can know the chemical formula. You choose, but you need to be able to identify the names of the molecules with these formula. Uh, so just giving you the words, and as always, I hate my pen. Uh, First one, not going to work for me, oxyhemoglobin. So this first molecule that I'm seeing here, and you think something by now, I'd have figured it out. So oxyhemoglobin, and the best way to get the word into your brain is to say it aloud, oxyhemoglobin. Second one, it's a doozy, is carb, I don't think I can write over there, carb, amino hemoglobin. So carb amino hemoglobin. The last one, easiest one, is reduced hemoglobin. So somehow in your mind you're going to have to be able to track these reactions to understand that at external respiration hemoglobin, which is inside of a red blood cell, combines with oxygen, the oxygen that diffused out of the alveoli, the air in the alveoli, and crossed over the, the wall of the alveoli by diffusion into the bloodstream. So oxygen has entered the bloodstream. Where does it go? It combines with hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. So this compound is inside of our red blood cells. It's not floating freely in, in the blood plasma. It's in the red blood cell. The second one, uh, reaction, so this is reaction one, reaction two, 
carbamino arrives. So hemoglobin, when it's not busy carrying oxygen around, it's going to carry carbon dioxide. It's getting rid of carbon dioxide now because carbon dioxide is going to exit the body here in our exhaled air, right? When we exhale, there's going to be more carbon dioxide in that air than in our inhaled air. Third reaction, reduced hemoglobin. So hemoglobin also, when it's not busy transporting oxygen, is going to transport the hydrogen ion and here it drops it off this hydrogen ion if it was left right running around it would make our blood acidic however it's going to get used up and it's going to combine with the bicarbonate ion that's the last word we should know bicarbonate which makes me think of pasta carbonara uh, but this is not that bicarbonate uh, an enzyme is going to catalyze this reaction of course we need to know the name of it carbonic anhydrase to produce water carbon dioxide again this carbon dioxide is leaving our body in our exhaled air moving on to internal respiration we're still in the blood different conditions warm and acidic pH of 7.38 and 38 degrees Celsius. These words are in comparison to external, okay, because this really isn't acidic, but we say as compared to external. And if we think about it, it just makes sense that it's slightly warmer inside. So this is happening in the systemic capillary beds. And we had a diagram like this on the test, right? And if you didn't understand it, you need to focus on it. And Oh, this is a capillary bed. Where the blood enters the arterial side in the middle of the bed, oxygen's getting out, carbon dioxide's entering. The reactions, again, pause it right here, copy them down if you didn't get them in class. And again, we need to either know the names or we can write the chemical formula. However, we need to be able to identify that that is, sorry, 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 one day I'll get it right. This is oxyhemoglobin, this is carbamino, this is the bicarbonate ion, this is the hydrogen ion, and here is reduced hemoglobin. Same enzyme here that we met at external. So word to the wise, right? If you know the four for external, look at this, they're exactly the opposite, but you must be able to remember with accuracy which direction the reactions are going. So here oxygen is being free up because it's going to enter our cells. These little green arrows, this is oxygen getting out of the blood. Carbon dioxide, the waste from cellular respiration is going to be entering the blood. It was just produced, it's going to get back into the blood to get transported back to external respiration to get out of our body and exhaled air. Forms of carbon dioxide, they are, whoops a doozles, sorry, uh, number one form and everything comes undone. Uh, when we tried to rush, First form is the bicarbonate ion, HCO3. Second most prominent way carbon dioxide is transported is as carb amino, HBCO2. Last way is just plain old, old dissolved in the blood plasma. Forms of hemoglobin, whoops a doozle. We see hemoglobin when combined. Is it going to go? No. Waste so much time just playing with my pen. We see it as oxyhemoglobin, we see it as reduced hemoglobin, and we see hemoglobin as carb amino hemoglobin. Last thing to mention, I think our time's up, carbon monoxide is a poison because it competes to combine with hemoglobin. That's it, hope it helped. And if I had time, I would recap.